Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we are checking out PC Linux OS. I've been looking at rolling release distributions as my daily driver is a Arch-based system, Endeavor OS, and I wanted to see what other options there were. Um, a couple days ago, I tried OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is a rolling release, and obviously Arch and OpenSUSE handle things differently in how they are releasing the packages. But someone pointed me to PC Linux OS. And I was like, why does that name sound familiar? And then I remembered it was one of the last distributions that I tried when I went with my first go of Linux 15 plus years ago. So I'm like, well, let's check it out. So here's the website. They start off by going, so cool, ice cubes are jealous. Nice dad joke there. You're greeted with a lot of information. I went straight to the FAQ because I wanted to know what is it based on? You know, 15 years ago, I wasn't too concerned about that. I was just trying to get things working on older machines. It says PC Linux OS is an independent distribution. It is not based on Ubuntu or Debian or Red Hat or any other distribution. It was once closely related to Mandrake Linux, but since 2007, it has been independent using code patches from Fedora, Media, Arch Linux, to name just a few. Almost every distribution I've tried so far has been based on something, Arch, Debian, those kinds of things. And this is saying it's independent. And it looks like it's being maintained by one person, Bill Reynolds aka Techstar, they keep things going as it goes. So it says here, was there a release cycle of PC Linux OS? You know, like point release, like Ubuntu. And it says there isn't one really. PC Linux OS is a rolling release distribution, which means you install once and then just perform regular update process to keep your system updated with the latest packages. Okay, cool. The other piece that I wanted to quickly point out before we go into the live environment is what sort of user is the PC Linux OS aimed at? And this is important for you as a user who might be interested in using PC Linux OS. PC Linux OS is aimed at the average desktop computer user who uses their system for daily tasks such as email, web browsing, multimedia viewing, etc. It is not aimed at server power development or other specialist areas. The repository does contain many packages for these specialist types of user, but it is not a priority for the small development team. So average Joe can use PC Linux OS. That's me. Let's get in to this live environment. I'm kind of excited to see what's different from when I used it last. So I'm having a hard time remembering what it was like before, but I do remember trying to install or theme it like a Windows XP for the people that I was giving these computers to, and I had found one. We might try and find and see if this has a XP theme that we can use as well. Switch to full screen mode. All right, this is the live environment that you start with here, and I'm just gonna go right into the install process. This is KDE, that's the version I chose. They have a Mate official version, they have an XFCE official version, and then there are some community additions that includes LXQT, which I almost got, but I wanted to move on. Let's go ahead and start this installation here. PC Linux OS installation wizard. All right, we're gonna use the free space of this virtual hard drive. All data will be wiped. And now it's installing and it's looking like it's going quite fast. I am fascinated to see what has changed. Just having that mindset, we're not gonna base on the Debians and the Ubuntu's of the world and see what they've come up with on their own. Use the Grub bootloader with graphical menu. Thank you very much. Delay before booting default image. I will say five seconds instead of 10. Thank you for the choices. You can enable or disable ACPI or SMP, APIC or local APIC. Thank you very much. Next, Drake Live install. Bootloader installation in progress. Oh, looks like we're done. No, wait, I didn't, I didn't set up a user. Maybe it'll do it on this next piece here. Okay, so now we're, we're moving on with the setup process. Central time zone for me. I just wanted me to set administrator password. Now I'm entering the user. Okay, we can check a change to a sweet icon there, a sweet icon. Get some remote login sessions with XDMCP available. Configuring this piece here. Language sessions and actions. You can just go ahead and shut down from here. 
pretty cool sessions. I guess since this is the only session I have, that's all that is selectable. And now we're logging into our first session of PC Linux OS with KDE. Now, what is going to set this apart from other Linux distributions? Once again, rolling release. So when the packages are available, tested and ready to be used, you can update your system. And there is some configuration pieces that they have. They have what's called their control center. So a control center that you can use, and this is unique to them, not a control center in the general sense, but in their own control center, install and remove software. Let's just start right there. Synaptic package manager, which you are probably quite familiar with. You know, these are what's installed up front. Let's see those packages there. No problem. Let's search for something like Kden Live. There's Kden Live. It's already installed. That's cool. What about something else like Audacity? Audacity is not available. Sections. Okay. You've got this here to find what you need. Now, once again, these are packages managed by them. This is not them waiting for Debian, waiting to procure their packages and get them ready to go. And then Ubuntu taking the Debian packages and making it what they needed to or whatever they do between the two of them. I don't know. Or Fedora bringing out their RPMs or whatever. Now, I think they use some form of an RPM and I believe they use apt and it's just kind of how they work and that's cool and fine. But let's find something simple that we can install. I clicked reload. And now it's checking the repositories. I was just noticing only installed packages that were available. Now we have some of these pieces that are showing up. Okay, well, guess what? Now if I search Audacity, it's there. And now I can install it. You can see your dependencies. If you haven't used Synaptic, it's an oldie but a goodie. I want to mark for installation and then I will click apply and it will install Audacity. It'll download it from their servers. I kind of like that little um, that little screw icon when things are loading or working on the mouse pointer. Kind of old school retro feel, I like it. They've got a real Windows decoration, like an older XP situation up there. We'll, we'll see if we can make it look XP a little more later, just because I'm curious and wanting to relive my past. <laughs> so far, this is very straightforward. I did need to understand that I needed to refresh and reload those repositories and now I've got Audacity installed. Once again, you can quickly go through here in the Synaptic Package Manager if you're unsure what to search for and you can search for it. So let's say you know you wanna use the Brave, you can search for it that way, the Brave web browser. But if you don't know that, you can go to sections and go to networking slash www. And you've got some web browsers here, Brave, Chromium, no big deal. So if you are used to a certain web browser, you can do that. All right, that's piece one. Let's also check quickly, we installed Audacity. So let's check and see where that would be. I would say it would be in sound and there it is. We saw that Caden Live was already installed and you can see here, Caden Live. You also have Handbrake. Handbrake is cool, guys. You've got your classics here. I am liking it. Looks like it already comes with VirtualBox installed on this. Once again, I'm still considering doing the, hey, I heard you like virtual boxes and virtual machines. So let's put a virtual machine in your virtual machine. I still haven't tried that yet, but I think it would be fun to do that and to see how far we can go. Now, there are some proprietary software already installed here. You have Spotify already installed here if you want Spotify. Just so you know, looks like they have a cloud storage situation here. Zoom is already installed. They're trying to get, remember, this is for what they call the average computer user to have what they need to be able to do daily tasks. And so they're giving people the tasks that people need. If you've been going through the pandemic like the rest of us, you pretty much needed Zoom to do any kind of work outside of your open source community. Software manager, cool. Sharing, FTP, thank you or configuring a web server, network services, configuring DHCP, configuring a proxy, okay, configuring DNS. These are all great. Hardware, browse and configure hardware. Let's take a look at my hardware. Detection in progress. Now remember, this is a virtual machine, so it's only gonna detect my virtual stuff, but cool. Straightforward and very familiar in its layout, if you will, uh, set up the graphical server. Well, it obviously knows that's um, <laughs> what I got, the VMware virtual video card, because that's what I'm using. Configuring your mouse and keyboard. I mean, you guys can read, but you, you get a sense of what they're trying to give you. 
a centralized location for all of those management pieces, especially for people coming from Windows. You can manage users on this system place, authentication, NFS shares, all right. Local disk managing and disk partitioning, share your hard drive, hard disk partitions, setting up a firewall right here, guys, and how you are booting up and setting up your display manager. Great, that control center is great and unique to them and getting users just ready to use their email, use their Excel spreadsheets or spreadsheets, I should say, and make things happen. Now, what also do they give us that is PC Linux specific? They just have a basic blue. They are not trying to give you something that you may not want. A lot of distributions like to give you some branding, right? They want to give you some of their own wallpapers, some of their own theming. And, you know, this looks like besides the window decorations, it's pretty straightforward. This menu here, this application launcher is very simple, very clean and to the point. If you use KDE, you know almost all of these pieces here, but there are some unique things that they have. They did go ahead and install Gparted on here. If I can navigate the menu, my live USB is right here. That's unique to an install that I don't normally see. What I do want to do is I want to open up console. I want to see if a couple of things are here. They may not be because this is their own thing. And that's cool. NeoFetch is not on here. That's not a problem. So we have top. I will pull this up just so you can see what it's like and what it's running on my machine. I gave 16 gigabytes of memory to this machine and eight cores. You can see that 581 megabytes are being used. That gives you a sense this is pretty lightweight for a KDE install. Nothing else you haven't seen here, but everything is clean and you can tell they focus on getting things nice and easily readable. And for people, I personally think, who are looking to transition into Linux from what they are used to, specifically Windows. Guys, they have time shift already here. You know how I feel about time shift. If you don't know about time shift, just quickly, time shift is a snapshot tool for you to back up your system. It is cool. I have a video about it. You want to check it out, but man, time shift is cool. I love it. It is wonderful. You've got your dolphin file manager. Everything feels nice and snappy and ready to go. My personal desire is to check out one thing, and this is strictly self-serving, but I want to see if there is a Windows theme that is easily seen. They've got a Windows 10, a Windows 7, but I am looking for something. Okay, so I couldn't find a quick Windows XP, so we're going to go with the next ew thing, which is Windows 7, which this looks not much like Windows 7, and I don't really like much about what I just did. But if you are new to KDE, it is something that is wonderful that KDE has, which is in the KDE system settings, you can select some great pieces and just make things work well. And people have global themes that you can look at and install and change what it looks like. This is not PC Linux OS specific, but just quickly what I was trying to achieve was just find an old school XP theme and see if I could get it to look like Windows XP for no other reason than for shock factor and for nostalgia. They have other beautiful themes that you can find and use, and they are wonderful. So I just wanted you to know that because let's say PC Linux OS seems to match what you're trying to do. You just want to be able to have everything you pretty much need is ready to go here. You have pretty much everything you would need if you just need some light video editing, some text editing, some office email, web browsing. It's all there ready for you to go in their own unique way. And you know, with the rolling release structure, it is always going to be an updated system. And that's really great. They go through, they manage their pieces. When they're ready to go, those software are sent out and you get an update notification and you update your system. You don't have to worry about getting PC Linux OS version 20.7. You just keep it updated and that's gonna be great. So if you're a no mess, no fuss, I just want what I need to just work nice and clean and good, PC Linux OS is definitely for you. If you're a developer and you need specific tools, this may not be for you. 
if you are a person that are used to certain platforms. So for instance, you've been in the Ubuntu ecosystem or the Arch ecosystem for a while, you may not like how things are. I felt it, you know, pretty familiar and easy to navigate. Like I said, if you don't like the KDE desktop environment, they have Mate, they have XFCE, and then they have some community editions you can check out. I think it's cool that something has been around as long as it has and is doing its own thing. So I wanted to highlight PC Linux OS today. I hope you check it out. See if it's for you. See you next time.